Thank you for joining me today. Uh, in this video, just as with the others prior to this, I'm going to be reading the three sentences written just behind me on the whiteboard, um, after which I'll step out of the way and ask that you pause the video to reread the sentences yourself, because embedded within each are multiple errors that I'd like for you to correct. Go ahead and resume the video when you feel that you're ready to check to see if your answers align with my own. And of course, if you have alternative um, modifications or perhaps you disagree with my modifications or corrections, you're welcome to go ahead and leave those in the comment section below. So as I said, I'm gonna go ahead and start by reading the sentences. Well, we'll look at sentence number one. Hopefully it's focused. Oops, okay, no. All right, sentence number one. Leona mow a grass this morning. Tonight, she water the flowers. All right, sentence number two. Caden cut in his own hairs to look more like a, to look more like G.I. Joe. And sentence number three. Why did I do this? Caden yelled when he looked in the mirror. All right, I'm going to go ahead and step away. Oops, slide it into view. Hopefully, oops, if it wants to slide, slide it into view. Go ahead and pause the video. Reread it, correct it, and resume. Okie dokie, let's go ahead, since I'm moving, I'm guessing that you resumed, obviously. So we'll go ahead and correct it together. Beginning of a sentence for question, or excuse me, for sentence number one is a proper noun, and also, again, beginning of a sentence, which always requires a capital letter. We'll go ahead and do that now, or mark it. Liana, mow a grass this morning. So she's done it this morning, which means it's happened in the past, which suggests that this action should be past tense. This verb, rather, should be past tense. So she mowed, I'm going to add ed, it's a regular verb. So lay on a mode, a grass. Uh, a grass is a general article, but I want to use the grass because I'm referring to a specific area or a specific section or specific grass in this case that she has mowed. So I'm going to change the general article a to the definitive article the. So a should read, let's get this in view. There we go. Should read the. I'm thinking of my handwriting. Grass this morning. Period. That's its own clause. Next clause, or next sentence. Of course, you could have ended this with a comma. That's totally fine. In fact, actually, I think that's probably a better idea. I'm going to go ahead and use a comma instead. Next one. Tonight, she... Oh, sorry, I've got P.E. outside. Tonight, she water the flowers. So she hasn't done this yet, so we want some kind of conditional. Or not a conditional, but something to suggest that it will happen, which is the word will. So tonight she will, or if you want to use the contraction, you can join she and will using the apostrophe to make she'll water the flowers, period. And then we've completed sentence number one, so let's go ahead and make sure it's still in focus. Sentence number two, get out of the way because it's not focusing. All right, Caden cutted. Okay, well, Caden, proper noun. Also, first word in the sentence requires a capital letter. Cutted is not the past tense of cut. Cut is an irregular uh, verb in this case, so it should just read cut, right? So he's either doing it now or in this case he's already done it. So I don't really need to modify it much, it's both. So Caden cut, he's already done it. His own hair, we're looking for the uncountable noun. We're not saying hairs. Generally speaking, when you're cutting hair, it's not you're cutting one individual strand, you're cutting multiple. And so hairs is not necessarily redundant, but it would not be the appropriate word to use when referring even to a large number of hair. So we're gonna say that he cut his own hair, referring to the hair on his head. To look, here we have the adverbial form of to. I'm stressing something, instead I want the uh, preposition. So I'm going to say to, T-O, look more like G-I Joe. G and I are initialisms, so we're going to go ahead and capitalize each. And of course you want to separate, in this case, the abbreviation for both words with a dot. So G-I and then Joe is also a part of this name which means it should be capitalized. It's the name of a, a toy or a cartoon if you're not familiar. And then we're going to end it with a period. Okay. That was a little tricky because maybe it just requires that you know or are more familiar with G.I. Joe. All right, sentence number three. Why, again, beginning of a sentence, we need to capitalize it. Why did I, uh, we have the 
independent subject pronoun I. So I'm going to go ahead and capitalize it, always capitalize. So why did I do this? I hear a question. So it's an interrogative, even though it's a question Caden, in this case, is asking himself. So it's rhetorical. Uh, why did I do this? That's a question. And when we continue, Caden yell when he look in the mirror. OK, well, this is something he's already done. So in this case, we have two verbs that need to be put in the past tense. Caden yelled. I'm going to go ahead and affix ed. When he looked in or into the mirror. And I'm going to go ahead and end with the period. But you'll notice that Caden has said this thing specifically, right? I'm attributing this comment or this statement, um, or question in this case, to what Caden, uh, as Caden being responsible for having said it. So I want to capture that um, as dialogue using quotation marks, which you wrap around the beginning and the end. And you likely want to comma to separate this initial clause from the rest of the sentence. So why did I do this? Caden yelled when he looked into or in the mirror. All right, and I believe we are good to go. Uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like, and if you haven't, please subscribe. It would really help me a lot. So thank you for joining, and I look forward to working with you in the next one.